There's a tendency today for elites to deconstruct or censor many of the stories that we hold dear as a society. I'm pleased to say that I'm now being joined by a man who is doing the opposite of this and has a book coming out soon, which is a retelling of the Snow White fairy tale. Now, joining me from Montreal is the orthodox icon carver and host of the hugely successful Symbolic World po podcast, Jonathan Pajot. Uh, can, Jonathan, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, could you start out by telling me a bit about your book, Snow White and the Widow Queen, and why you're working on it? Sure, Calvin, it's great to see you. Uh, I'm happy to be on the on your show as well. We met once, but this is great to talk to you in this context. Um, the the note, the idea is that we've been watching, you know, for now decades, we've watched uh, the big companies deconstruct our fairy tales, our stories, our myths. You know, we even saw it happen with Lord of the Rings now with the most recent series. And a lot of conservatives are complaining about it. A lot of people are complaining, but I feel like now is rather the time to recapture the stories for ourselves. And so in order to do so, uh, you know, I paired up with some amazing illustrators and we want to tell a very beautiful uh, straightforward, but also insightful versions of classic fairy tales, starting with Snow White. And so we, we, we put it together as a crowdfunder. We're crowdfunding it now on Kickstarter. Uh, people can go and back it. But that's the plan is really to kind of also send a message that people are tired of watching the, uh, the stories get twisted and, and uh, used for ideological means, but rather people are looking to celebrate these stories. You know, that's why they cared about them in the first place. Well, there's a tendency now to rewrite old stories in ideological ways, isn't there? Why do you think this, happen this is happening? And is your approach a good way of, well, a solution to prevent it? Well, in some ways, it's a playing out of uh, the revolutionary trope, which has been playing through our society now for centuries, you know, and but it's kind of accelerating and accelerating. And now, you know, what, you know, what was already revolutionary tropes in the 60s now has become a kind of insane, exploded revolutionary trope where every little idiosyncrasy, every exception has to become the center, you know, has to become the, you know, the one that's holding the center of the story. And so because of that, you know, We've put ourselves in an impossible situation with storytelling, which is that you can't tell the story anymore. So, you know, Disney is going to is putting together right now a version of Snow White and they're going to put it out as a live action movie. And I don't even know how they're going to do it because they can't have Snow White be woken up by a prince anymore. So how are they going to even tell the story? I don't even know how they're going to do it. Well, that's a good point, because these stories, these fables are how we discern reality and how we discern truth, right? And this brings me to the, the second topic, which I know you've talked about a bit recently, is that AI is also changing the narrative on how we discern truth and how we discern reality. So is this why you're focusing on fantasies? Well, I mean, I really want to focus on, it's not just fantasies, it's really fairy tale stories, and also, in some ways, telling them in a way that will bring insight, because that's the one thing that AI really can't provide any right now. AI can provide information, but the insight still comes from humans. That's why we call them hybrid AIs, which is that the actual intelligence of AIs comes from human discernment, not from the machine. And so if we can continue to help people reach ins insightful moments, then you know that is better than trying to fight the AI in terms of quantity. And so I think that going back into these stories, that's one of the ways to do it is to tell them them in a way that will like the way that we're telling it is in a way that can be read to kids, but that adults that know their myth, that know their Bible, that know all their, you know, that know storytelling will be surprised at the things I pull together and the analogies that I make and will hopefully provide insight into what these stories are about. Right. And Jonathan, you recently visited the UK on a bit of a tour. What did you think and what kind of symbolism did you see while you were out here? Well, I mean, for someone coming from Canada, obviously going to the UK is an amazing thing because Canada is such an, it's a, it's a naturally beautiful place, but it's a culturally ugly place. You know, we live in suburbs, plastic suburbs with the telephone wires. And so, you know, I did a speaking tour at Oxford and Cambridge, uh, and we did some events in London. And so I was just awed by the beauty of these places and just by the richness of the tradition and the culture. Uh, at the same time, feeling as if it's in danger of, you know, let's say, let's just feeling that it's in danger because I was there just a few weeks ago and you could see the flag, you know, flying over everything. Uh, and uh, there are a few things that I noticed in certain places, like even in Westminster Abbey, certain politicized gestures uh, that were worrisome for me to think that that we can feel the 
we can feel like the UK culture is fraying. But I, I want to reiterate, though, it also feels like in the UK, there's a resistance to this that is stronger than many other places like GB News and yourself, you know, people at Unheard. And I, you know, I met a bunch of people that were really, you know, open minded, free thinking people that were looking to not let themselves be taken over by the by the insane ideologies that are that are invading us. That's great to hear, because when I look at places like the Houses of Parliament and I see that the, the chamber is made up to represent the mass, essentially, this, this is Christian architecture and it's transcendental, this is wonderful. But then, like you say, I look above the building and I might see the Ukraine flag or I might see an LGBT flag and I see symbolism uh, of, of being conquered, of our ideologies being taken over. What do you think about that? No, I think that's right. It seems to be that that pride is definitely being used to create some kind of international religion. I don't know how else to say it. Some kind of international movement that will transcend nationality. And so, and it seems to be this worship of exception or this worship of inclusion as the only principle by which we exist. You know, Justin Trudeau is the greatest example. Just listen to what he says. He's almost like programmed by this ideology when he says things like, uh, you know, inclusion is our only value. Diversity is our only value. You know, this is ridiculous. Obviously, that's not possible. You can't just have diversity. That's called decomposition. You know, that, that's what only diversity is. We need a healthy mix of diversity and unity. But this worship of diversity as the only principle that unites us is clearly a, a move towards a kind of international uh, international move, let's just call it that way. I'm with you. It's a, it's a false idol. It's a new god. But Jonathan yeah. Paggio, thank you so much for your time and thank you for everything you do. Uh, Jonathan Paggio yeah, is the host you. of the Symbolic World podcast.